Sometimes when I get lonely, I put a magnetic coffee cup on the roof of my car and drive around so people wave at me. It's so sad. All right, well, let's talk about magnetic fields, and we're going to learn some of the hand rules. There's three in all to learn, but I'm going to show you the first two here. This is where they belong. So first of all, uh, like we've been doing before with gravitational fields and then with electric fields, let's define what a magnetic field is. So we're going to draw it. At least the direction of it is going to be the direction that north on a compass would point. Remember what a compass is. You know, it can be like a little circle thingy, for example, and it's got like a little thing like this. You know, and it can rotate, it can move. I don't know if you've ever been like, you know, Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts or something like that or whatever, but this is like a little compass that tells you which way is north. Um, now to show you this here, we're going to be defining the magnetic field strength actually. It turns out the letter we use is actually called B, and it's measured in something called T, which is Tesla's. So this right here is actually named after, not the car company, the car company is actually named after uh, Tesla himself. All right, so let's uh, look at this. This one here says B, we call it, B is measured in Tesla. Okay, uh, so let's actually then try to figure this out. Like, where would a north actually point? Um, let me show you before doing anything else. There's a nice little PHET animation for magnetic compass. So I can actually put it here. So if you look at this right here, do you notice this little north on the compass? Remember, north doesn't like a north, so it wants to point away. Do you notice? But then over here, what's it going to do? Oh, it wants to point away. But over here, for example, oh, it's happy. A north wants to point towards the south and so on. So you could place this compass wherever you like, and you'll kind of see, like, where it is that it would go. Now, what's kind of interesting, though, is that uh, if you think really carefully about the Earth, we say that the Earth has a north pole, you know, at the top, so to speak, like as the way it's drawn with a north, right? But actually, if you want to look at the Earth, technically the Earth has a south, which is really kind of mind-blowing. Why is that? Well, that's the only way that a north on a compass would actually point towards that point. That's a little bit mind-blowing. You don't really have to know that for exams necessarily, but I think it's kind of weird. But there we go. Let's just focus on magnets, and we'll be fine. So let's look at this one here. So we're going to draw these. I'm going to draw them maybe in green. So if I have a little compass right here near the north, remember the compass doesn't want to point towards the north. It wants to point away from it. So it'll be like away. And it'll go away. It turns out it'll do these, these kind of arches like this right here, these kind of arcs like this. And, of course, it's symmetric, so it go kind of like this. And, of course, I can draw an outer one, like one that goes even further like this right here, one that goes even further like this, and so on. So this right here is how the Earth, for example, would go. And believe it or not, this is uh, really cool because it relates to, um, you ever heard of the northern lights, for example, Aurora Borealis, if you live in a northern hemisphere? Turns out these... Um, we have these cosmic rays coming from the sun. So they're actually coming in from the sun, and they're hitting our atmosphere. And what happens is these, uh, these charged particles that come from the sun, they enter uh, the Earth's magnetic field, and they basically spiral inwards, like this here, or they'll spiral inwards like this. And as they spiral inwards along the, you know, the Earth, remember, is a big circle here. As they spiral inwards like this here, they accelerate and give off uh, some light. So that's why you find this along this sort of area here at the top. It's called Aurora Borealis. And by the way, if you live in the southern hemisphere, you might be able to see it, like, I don't know, in like southern Chile, for example, or maybe southern um, New Zealand. You might see the Aurora Australis. You'll see it down here as well. It's just that less people live there. Okay, so let's talk about, uh, first of all, what happens with a wire with a current in it. So imagine then you have some sort of wire. Let's say my pen here is a wire. If it has current going through it, then you're going to have a magnetic field around it. That's because electric and magnetic fields go hand in hand. Haha, <laughs> I use the hand in hand because you know, we use a hand rule. But that means when you have one, you have the other. Now, this is weird because in the IB, we use what's called conventional current. That's supposed to be the direction of positives, which I think is weird, but there we go. It's not actually, we don't use the, uh, the current uh, that's the direction of electrons go. Because of this, then, there's sort of two different hand rules that normally, you know, typically use. There's a left hand rule, a right hand rule, and we're not going to use the left hand rule. Then because we're using conventional current, we will use the right hand rule. Now I'm going to attempt to draw my hand like this here, so where you can see, you know, my fingertips and my thumb. I'm going to attempt to draw this. Okay, so you're going to see how awesome an artist I am. Uh, here we go. This is always fun to try to draw. You'd think I'd be better at this. I've had so much practice, but I'm really not. Uh, so there we go. They're supposed to be my thumb, and here's my fingernails. I guess you can see them. Oh my god, that thumb is super huge. It's like a weird sausage, but oh well. I hope you understand the idea here. 
So first of all, I'm going to be drawing the fingers, for example, the way that your fingers are curling around like this here. I'll say the fingers are the magnetic field. Okay, so that's this magnetic field. And then what's your thumb going to be? Well, your thumb is going to be uh, the current. Okay, so thumb is the current. And that's it. That's how you do this. So you put your thumb in the direction of the current, and then the way that your fingers then are curling around, that'll tell you uh, how the magnetic field goes. So let's look at a question. So now we have a wire, and the current is coming out of the page. Now, I think it's important to talk about this convention here that we use. So what do we mean by this? Well, it's something, uh, if we think about this, this is supposed to be 3D uh, that we're drawing here. Well, we have you know, uh, we have different directions. We have up, we have right, we have down, we have left. Right? We have those things. But we also have out of the page, you know, stabbing you in the face, and we have into the page going down. So how do we draw out of the page and into the page? We have a convention for those. If an arrow is coming right towards you, you know, this thing here is coming towards you, that's the point that's going to hit your face. Okay, that's the dot. And then an arrow, for example, you might imagine has an X. It doesn't usually, it has a triangle, but a well, but that would be like the fletching, like the back of the arrow you see going into the page. If that helps you, then great. But otherwise, this is the this is the convention we tend to use. So that means if I have a wire with the current coming out of the page, that's why I drew it with a dot. Because we have to imagine this wire is kind of, it's coming, you know, out of the page into your face. Okay, so this wire is coming straight towards you. If that's the case, remember I use my right hand, I place my thumb going towards me, so do this yourself, so place your thumb coming towards you, and do you notice which way your fingers curl? My fingers are curling around in a circle going uh, counterclockwise, you could say. So that means I'm going to attempt to draw a circle right here. I'm bad at drawing circles, but luckily I can kind of cheat and move it like this here. So there we go. And I'm going to draw another one, in fact. I'll just try to draw like a second one. Let's see here. Oh, that wasn't too bad. Then I'll fix it here like this and put it down here. I have to draw, though, the direction of it, though. That's really important. So let me actually uh, go ahead and label that. So let's see, it goes around counterclockwise. It's going to be like this way, you know, this way, then going up, going left up here, and so on. So basically, you can draw as many things as you want, but it's going around like this, and now I'm going to draw that's the magnetic field. So that's your magnetic field is going around like this, which means if you placed a compass, for example, like what if I placed a compass right here? Well, the compass would actually point like this right here. So the compass would point this way because that's where the north would point. That's how we defined the uh, magnetic field lines. right? But if I had a compass, for example, um, I don't know, maybe up here, for example, where would it point? Well, up here it would be pointing left. Does that make any sense? So it's, it all depends on you know, which, which way your magnetic field lines are going at that point. So that's why I, th I think it's important to, to understand a little bit about this here. So let's see if it makes sense to you. We'll try another one. This time we have a wire with the current going into the page. That's why we have an X. And at which direction will a compass point if it's placed down here? Well, it helps, again, to use our right hand rule. It's always right hand rule. Remember, I put my thumb this time into the, into the page. So I have to have my thumb going into the page. And if you try that, the way that your fingers curl, my fingers are now curling in a clockwise direction. So I'm going to attempt to draw myself like a, a circle like this right here. Let's see here that. Okay, fine. And I'm going to draw that then again, it goes this way. So it's going to go like that, like this, like this, and like this. Well, if I draw myself another circle this time, and this time a circle that's going to pass, you know, through this point, I'm trying to draw one that's actually going to pass exactly through that point. For example, like this. Well, then if I do that, which way is that one going? Do you notice it's still going the same direction? So that's why I think it's it's really good idea. I imagine myself doing what I just did, you know, where I draw myself a circle and then I make it fit through this. Keep in mind the direction, though. So that means, okay, over here it's going down. Over here it's going left, isn't it? Over here it's going up. Over here it's going to the right. That means if it's uh, going left over here, well, that means then that a compass will point to the left. In other words, if I drew myself a little compass, it'll be like this. This is my little circle like this here. This is my compass. Uh, whoops, that was a really bad circle. I can cheat and have this thing draw me circles. My little north on the compass, right? Whoops. My little north on the compass. That'll be uh, this direction right here. Hey. Like this. There we go. So this will be like the north. So it'll be pointing to the left. So you could say that right as points to the left. 
And again, why is it to the left? Well, that's because at this point A, the magnetic field is going to the left. You notice that arrow is left, so that's why. Okay, what if we have a coil of wire? If we have a coil of wire, so that means, you know, we can imagine like some kind of, you know, little ship like this right here, and then we're going to have like a coil of wire going around it like this right here, like that. This is, tends to be a solenoid like that. Well, again, we're using conventional current, so we're not going to have a left-hand rule. We're going to have a right-hand rule. This time, uh, we're going to be curling our fingers in the direction of the current because this is a wire that goes around. Like the current, let's say it's going up and over this. Then it means my fingers are curling that way. I'm going to attempt to just draw this. Can you see what I'm drawing like this? Well, I'm trying to draw it like this. For you, it'll be like this. Notice you can't see my fingernails because they're hidden. So I'm going to try to draw this. Uh, good luck. <laughs> I hope you can draw better than I can. Let's see your circle like this. I'm going to three. I'm not going to show the fingernails here, but I will see the fingernails here. Now, what's going to happen here is my uh, fingers then, my fingers will be curling in the direction of the current. Fingers equals the current. And that means then my thumb, then, my thumb will be in the direction of the magnetic field. Okay, so my fingers are curling in the direction of the magnetic, uh, sorry, the current, and my thumb is going to be the magnetic field. And remember then, if that's really what my thumb is doing, then that also tells me the direction of north, doesn't it? Because my thumb, remember, we defined the magnetic field lines as the direction that north on a compass would point. So this also tells you north. So the north basically is that way. Or if it flips, oh, now the north is the other way. Or, oh, now the north is this way. It all depends on the orientation of your solenoid or your coil. I like this joke. I this by Dimitri Martin. I think he's awesome. Now we have an example with an electromagnet. So what is that? That's when you have a coil of wire or a solenoid, but it's hooked up to a battery. And as you run current through this, let's say this is like a metal, for example. Um, if this is a metal, as you run current through it, it's going to make this thing into a magnet. It's going to have a north and a south. But if you stop the current, it usually will stop that. That's the way, for example, in the, uh, in the room, for example, right now where I'm sitting, it's a little music studio. The door here is actually an electromagnet. In other words, you have to press a button for the door to actually open, because otherwise it's like a really strong magnet that's holding the door closed. And that's because there's a current going through that uh, circuit. As you press a button, basically you stop that current, so that means, oh, now it's no longer a magnet, so it can open, no problem. In this case right here, let's assume that we have this, uh, the way it's going. Can you see I've drawn it to where like the current goes out and around, then it comes back towards you, and then it goes back over again? So that means you should use your right hand rule, and I'm going to curl my fingers over this direction. So in other words, my fingers are going to curl over like this, and my thumb then will be on the left. Now for you, it might be reversed. I'm not sure how the camera is, but it might be like that for you. But basically do this on the screen for yourself. So roll your finger, use your right hand, roll your fingers over this right here, which means my thumb is on the left side. If that's the case, that means I'm going to get a north here, Ooh, and that means I always get a south here. You can't have a north by itself. North always makes a south at the other end. Now, uh, so that's just going to be the, the answer to this one. It's pretty easy. But a nice little tip is, hey, what if you reverse the direction of this? So what if all of a sudden the current flipped? Well, if the current flipped, well, then, you know, this right-hand row then would flip because now the current would be going back and over and back and over. And that means then that the north would be on the right side and the south would be on the left. So that's why you could actually have it flip back and forth. If you have the current changing directions all the time, then you have the north and the south flipping like that. Okay, that's it.